Hey everybody, Shane here with Pokemon... Fuck, that's not right. Hey everybody, Shane here with Edgestorm, and a what is Edgestorm kind of way. So, I'm just going to go through the database, and if I require going into the map, I will show you that. Basically, this is for Sean, who asked, how is Edgestorm made? So, this is how Edgestorm's made. So, the actors are... The characters, they are my actors. This is true for both gameplay or game making, because this is in fact RPG Maker, allows you to make games, but I'm using it for a different way to make a, I guess machinima is the best way to describe it, but I'm using it to create a show. I have the pilot on unlisted because I'm waiting for a, fuck, a right time to actually release it to the public. So the cameraman, don't really use him much anymore because of the, a new way I found to edit talking scenes. Uh, Basis, my character, Mercury Billy's character, GN Sean's character, and Jeremy is of course Jeremy's character. Silver is Jason's character, but... I can't tell you because that's spoilerific. Classes, these are Final Fantasy classes, and they function similarly to the way they did in the original Final Fantasy, however, because of the differences in the engines, I can't get them to be 100%. But uh, take a magic using class, they in fact learn magic. Class skills, the, the magic that the magic using classes use. They are all, for the time being, Final Fantasy skills. Items, they are a combination of Final Fantasy and, yeah, smoke bomb, I don't really need that. That's more like a escape orb. Escape rope, maybe. I don't know. Don't need that, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Uh, Summon Bruin, that's that's a spoiler alert. But these are all Final Fantasy and Pokemon items, like EV Yield. Weapons, they are all Final Fantasy weapons. I need to add more because the show would be awful if we were at level 1 the entire time. Armors, it's Final Fantasy armors, but actually, it's mostly, well, uh, Pokemon. You capture a Pokemon, and then you equip it to your weapon or your armor, and that's how you level up. Uh, one way. That's one way to level up. You can be extremely powerful, which is one aspect of the show, really. Uh, more spoilers. Yellow Tunic, this is for Jeremy. Yeah, it's for Jeremy because he and Billy wear the same clothes because they are both black mages. So I gave them uh, individual outfits based on the Pokemon that they pick up. Uh, don't really think it's a spoiler to say what the Pokemon is. Um, this is the rundown of the Pokemon. So I have a Squirtle, Billy has a Bulbasaur, Sean has a Charmander, and Jeremy has a Pikachu. So. Jeremy's going to look like yellow from the Pokemon manga, and Billy's going to look like Shintaro from Kagura Project, but since he already looks like Pokemon manga's red, it fits. Anyway, uh, enemies, I have all the... F I have most of the Final Fantasy enemies, and they got a vampire, but I don't think we get that far in the show, so I may have gone overboard, but it'll save me time whenever I recreate it in MV, or not recreate, uh, just port everything to MV. Uh, I have Pokemon as well, they have a leveling up system, these do not, so it keeps it balanced, hopefully, haven't tested it. Uh, for capturing Pokemon, you have a base room in your inventory, random number 1 through 255, and then the way that I think it works the best is by if it's a number below their catch rate, then you got it. Congratulations. Then you get that specific Pokemon. Now I'm thinking about adding base rune, great base rune, ultra great base rune, and then master base rune. It's a thing. Working out states. These basically are your statuses. So your burn status. That's somewhere burn. That's the last one. Burn. Hooray. Animations. That's actually... Uh, tell us that's... Okay, here we go. Common events. Master control. Camera location, if I use it. Uh, player X and Y, that's another thing. Sign in, here we go. This is what makes Edgestorm, I want to say unique, although I have no clue. 
it functions as if it were an MMO, although it's not. And I can, ex I can show you how it looks rather than just trying to explain it, which would probably be better. And a lot of data saving, so it takes a while. I don't need you, so new game. And here we go. Who's logging in? This is username. You don't actually create a username. There are like five set usernames that you use to log in to access a specific character. There's the camera, who uses who's who is the cameraman, basis, GN, Jeremy, and Mercury. So we're gonna go into basis. And it's a character customization. Here we go, base of Shaggy. We're gonna give him, I don't know, the purple blue hair, uh, pale, uh, pale body, no, yes. I don't know, eyes, basis has blue eyes, and he has a pale body. There we go, there, there's basis. Now he's, here are your classes. He's a red mage, red, are you sure? Yes, here we go. Now, it's not a game. I have to reiterate, I'd like to make it a game, but for the time being, it is an engine to make the show in. So, which is a good thing because there's so many bugs. But I have to manually turn on his clothes. So he's a red mage, and voila. Now, basis is actually going to pick up silver along the way. That's not what I want, so we're just not going to do all that. This is process to death. It is using custom map, not custom maps. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's using maps made in RPG Maker VX Ace as template maps, I guess. But besides, uh, these are my custom characters. I've had them since 2011 with the original VX. So basis, uh, talk to Ralph, Jader, Kara, Silver. You want to join my party? Okay. But that's not why we're here. I'm showing you who the other characters are. Holy crap. Something fell. Uh, boom. That's not where any of the other characters are. So let's actually sign out. Sign out, yes. And then load. And we're going to load up back here with Mercury, Gian, and Jeremy. And I can't walk out here because... I, I'll show you. This is the Pokemon map of Kanto. Route, Palette, Route 1, Viridian, Route 2, Pewter, Route 3, Route 4. So because I'm making the entire map of Kanto, it's shifting quite a lot. Meaning wherever I place the exit location, it'll change. I could place, let's say we're in some place right here. Let's say I want to get out of Mount Moon. I place it here, but then whenever Cerulean comes next, and then route like 25, I think, maybe, maybe something else, Bill's house. Bill's house is way up here, but as you can see, I'm at the top of the map, so I have to actually shift everything down. So whenever I exit out of Mount Moon, it's right here at 127.06, everything gets shifted down, 127.06 is still there, but the Mount, Mount Moon exit is going to be significantly lower, so that's bad. That's why I can't exit any of my maps right now, which presents a problem when testing. I mean, I, you know, it presents a problem when testing. So, what else do we have? Common events? Death? Death events? This is going to be used for one scene that I can't tell you about. Class select? That's class select. Sign out? Allows you to sign out. Uh, cameraman? Camera clothes? Reset switch? Vault down? This is for the Pokemon jumping over things. Do I actually have those installed? Uh. uh. Oh, pardon me. Okay, so let me show you how jumping off of cliffs works. That's it. I set it up in the events. If you approach, that looks weird. Uh, I think that's because there is a tie, a shadow tile there. Yeah, that's the only reason. I set it up in these events. If you approach one of these red... What is falling? Is it... My game cases. I don't see why my game cases would be falling. Uh, there's just my Xbox in there. Okay, you good? Have fun. Anybody texting me? I should probably turn off that. 
Hooray! So, just right there, you vault down whenever you approach one of these red paces, red spaces. And I also have two and three for left or right. I'm gonna have to look at whichever one is left and whichever one's right. That could be better, although it doesn't matter. I'm not going for 100% perfection because one, it doesn't matter, and two, it actually fits into the show that this is amateurly made. It's not made by an actual game developer. It's made by me. That's, that's the thing. Shane is the character in Edge Storm who's like, I made a game, we should play it. That is the story of Edge Storm, in a nutshell. All right, give me access. Okay, you probably don't want to see this, so let's move on. I'm gonna have to do this. Well, I'm gonna have to do this in the end anyway. So ends basically, so I don't have to make a new character, uh, new event every time. You want to heal, okay? You want to fight somebody, cool. That's it. And vaulting. That's all I have. And that's basically the Edgestorm game project in a nutshell. Now, as for uh, how I make, okay. That's bad. Okay, so I'm gonna have to reinstall that. Anyway, I was gonna show you how the editing process goes, but instead I'm probably just gonna show you the the intro to Edgestorm at the end of this. So thank you for watching, and have a good day. Especially you, Sean. Thank you for asking about what Edgestorm is, and I'll talk to you later, buddy.